national health care debate has achieved near universal agreement that the other side is lying. But I've found that it draws a refreshing honesty from people who typically find it necessary to speak around the edges of their true beliefs. Only after a tedious and frustrating process of throwing dirt and kicking sand does a conversation dig down to the essential disagreements that must be resolved. In my last video blog, I focused on the revealed motivations of Rhode Island's Blue Blood Blue State Congressional Delegation. This time, we turn our attention to the ideas behind those blues. One is uh, you, you get uh, everyone's premiums, all the, all, the, all the dollars that are out there, and uh, they're divided among the small business people and the, and, the, and, the, and the unions and the state and the people who are paying out of their pocket, and try to move them into one place so that we can all control where the money is so we can make some better decisions about the system. What kinds of things aren't we doing that we should be doing to control costs? I think we need to be planning on what our system looks like, right? I mean, we need, we need to understand that when you have um, 30 offices with, with MRIs in a, in a state this small, you're going to get 30 times more MRIs than if you only had one MRI uh, center in a state uh, this, this size. We need to make sure that in a state of only a million people, how many cardiac surgery units do we need? Do we need two? Is that enough for everybody? Or do we need five? And if the way we get to five is because every hospital sees it as a way to, to increase their bottom line, what does that have to do with health care? Dr. Sungus looks at the local medical landscape, as he no doubt looks at other sides of the social sphere, sees an imbalance between wants and needs, and wishes to procure for himself and his ilk the power to correct it. This panacea quickly turns pandemic in the hands of central planners because it disregards human nature and human autonomy. Money is essentially a mechanism that a community uses to allocate its resources. How much it gets of something depends on how much it is willing to pay for it relative to the cost. Dr. Sungus' argument is that, left to our own devices, the people of Rhode Island are buying too much of things they don't need, and therefore lack the resources for more of the things he, as an expert, thinks they do need. He doesn't specify what those might be, but from other contexts one can discern that he'd include more routine coverage for people who currently don't partake of it. His close association with labor organizations suggests an increase in pay and business for unions. He'd probably seek to invest in programs to change people's behavior. And given his political inclinations, one can presume a soft spot for the medical requests of the left, such as abortion and euthanasia. Dictating rationing, by the way, is inherent in such planning. We do have a moral obligation to seek a system that maximizes access to necessary services and treatments. But we have to keep in mind the reality that people will only pay for what they want and will seek ways out of paying for things they don't want. If insurance plans redistribute too much of their money, consumers will seek out high deductible plans with health savings accounts. If a particular state, such as Rhode Island, goes too far with mandates and regulations, as ours already has, consumers will seek insurance from other states, which, of course, benefits out-of-state employers. So the planners have to trap them. Uh, when Joel previously said um, that Blue Cross was the only one that sells individual insurance, uh, my understanding is that in, that's in part because we have already made it illegal in the state of Rhode Island to deny pre-existing conditions, to sell to individuals um, not subject to pre-existing conditions. We've also made it illegal to drop people from their coverage. So as a result, no private insurance companies want to uh, follow those rules in the state and Blue Cross is the only one that does it. That leads to my concern about the selling across state lines. Which Trapping healthcare buyers in the system will not prove to be an adequate solution in the long term. People want the things they want. Therefore, they'll still look for ways to move their money away from things for which they don't wish to pay, and they'll pull resources from other positive expenditures for things for which they do. The field of things that Sengus's central planners must control necessarily expands. These are obviously simplistic illustrations. But that's the point. In an economy as complex as ours, I can't possibly predict the effects of planners' machinations. But neither can they. No doubt Sungus and Azen are very smart fellows, but there are just too many variables. The world is far too unpredictable, and human nature is 
too intractable. The planners are bound to fail. This isn't an unheard of argument. Indeed, it's been described by the likes of Friedrich Hayek for decades. Idealists strive to plot a course to utopia, and because everybody's got different notions about what that means, and because reality is simply beyond the comprehension of human beings, the plans wear away at the society until compliant people who are used to having somebody else take care of things for them assent to domination and hand to a dictator the power that the planners had gathered together in one place. An alternate approach would begin with the observation that regulations and mandates already distort the system, and rather than ratchet up controls and expand them nationally and across the economy, we should allow people to determine the value that medical services have to them, and, where necessary, help the less fortunate in ways that don't inflate the costs and don't inflate human autonomy.